Welcome to The Nation, I'm Rachel Smalley. New rules to restrict low deposit mortgages came into force this week. It's estimated thousands of first home buyers will be locked out of the market by the Reserve Bank's new loan to value rules. So what hope is there for home buyers on low incomes? Housing Minister Dr Nick Smith joins me now from Nelson. Good morning Minister, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, good. Uh, good morning, Rachel. I want to start with uh, a quote, actually, uh, something that you said on Q&A, actually, back in July, where you said that the government had made it plain to the Reserve Bank that you wanted to see an improvement in home ownership and try to take the bubble out of the Auckland market. By your own measure, Minister, you appear to have failed. Well, I don't think so at all, and you need to look alongside the Reserve Bank measures this week is the very substantive efforts that the government has made through trebling the number of welcome home loans that are actually exempt from those speed limits imposed by the Reserve Bank, the doubling of the number of people that are eligible for the KiwiSaver First Home Deposit Subsidy, and of course this week very significantly signing the accord with the Auckland Council on Thursday that commits to 39,000 additional homes in that big okay. city of Auckland over the next three years. So you said that the government was going to make it plain to the Reserve Bank uh, that it wanted to see an improvement in home ownership uh, and, and own home ownership rates rather. So how did you make Indeed. it plain to the Reserve Bank? Well, let's look at what are the most important factors for homeowners. The first is in terms of interest rates. If you want to kill off, and if you look at post-war New Zealand, the periods of which home ownership have gone backwards has been periods of very high interest rates. So we've been working with the Reserve Bank Governor to make sure that Kiwi families get access to low interest rates for as long as possible. But and how does, second, I don't course, understand, Dr Smith, though, how the Reserve you know, Bank responded with LVRs. How does that improve home ownership rates? Oh, absolutely it does. How because does it? the Reserve Bank has made plain that if they do not put those speed limits, the only other tool he has available is to put up interest rates and that would be very tough not just on first home buyers but everybody out there that's got a home mortgage. And the second factor is this, what's making it so difficult for first home buyers is that sort of compound 15, 16% increase in house prices in markets like Auckland. Now if that continues then that just further lifts the hurdle that families have to get over to be able to get a home. And so what the Reserve Bank Governor is doing is about financial stability. It's about avoiding the sort of economic mess that we see in countries like the US and Ireland from letting these bubbles get out of control. But it also long term is the right thing for homeowners. It, it, it seems though that first time buyers haven't been protected in all of this. It's hard to see how first time buyers are going to get on the market through this. Well I think you need to look alongside Rachel those welcome home loans where this week we've trebled the number as of Tuesday that are going to be available. That means that over the next three years there are going to be 15,000 families that get access to one of those welcome home loans provided by Housing Corp. Second thing is that the real key to getting that stake in a home is getting the money for a deposit. Now it is true that the Reserve Bank changes are going to set limits on the banks and require a bigger deposit. But with those changes to KiwiSaver, we're going to see 20,000 more people get access over the next three years to the sort of deposit they're going to need to get into their home. What now, happens, I'm one though? of a view that says, yes, we want families getting into a home, but we also want them to have a deposit so that they are not exposed in the way in which, frankly, hundreds of thousands of families were caught up in a country like America of their home mortgage being more than the value of their home and that doesn't help but anybody. people are going to be exposed. Surely if you look at the last quarterly monetary policy statement, if you look at Graham Wheeler's comments in the uh, Herald this week, the prediction is, is that interest rates will rise by 2% by the end of 2015. That's a remarkable oh, rise. That is, there, there is going to be a rise in interest rates and the issue for New Zealand, they're at the lowest level that they have been in 50 years. That's been great for people getting into a home. It's been good for business. And what the issue for the Reserve Bank Governor, and we as a government are very clear that we need to respect the independence of that Reserve Bank. Sure, it just gives me the nervous nellies when I see opposition parties that want to stamp all over that independence. Now that may be good politics, but I tell you, we have a huge amount of stake in terms of good financial stability and, and good monetary policy long term for our country.
So the rates are going to rise. They go, you know, by my calculations, if those rates rise, say, by 2%, which is what Graham Wheeler, the monetary policy statement, predicts, then the average Auckland mortgage would go up by $400 a month. That will mean people will go to the wall. You're accepting, though, that those rates will rise? You'll let that happen. Oh, I think it is inevitable as the economy improves that those 50-year low mortgage interest rates uh, are going to rise. What we want to do as a government is to make sure that our fiscal policy and the way in which we are managing the economy keeps access for New Zealanders to low interest rates for as long as possible. What the Governor has said is that if we don't have those LVRs, he would have to put up interest rates by at least 50 base points. That is why it is so important that we get this mesh of housing policy working well. He's also made the point that we have to focus as a government on increasing housing supply. Okay. That's why this week we made the big announcement uh, in South Auckland uh, of additional homes. That's why we've done that accord, because long term that's the key. Nonetheless, in this environment, it seems mortgage sales are coming, doesn't it, Minister? Those rates will go up. People are going to have negative equity. Mortgage sales are coming, aren't they? Well, I think it is true that interest rates over time will rise. They are at extremely low levels. The steps that the government is taking, and, you know, we talk of when we came to government, uh, those rates in 2008 were 10%. Now, currently they're at 5 They are likely to lift. If we manage the policy well, we can keep those rates lower sure, for longer. but have you been too slow to react here? I mean, these prices have gone up and up and up and the government hasn't done anything. Well, I don't think it's fair to say that the government uh, has not been on the ball here. If you look at the Productivity Commission, the report that we uh, commissioned uh, back in 2019, it's produced a really solid foundation for what we need to do in housing. Sure, but, and every but, one of those things, okay, whether it's well, been land supply, the affordable materials housing across project, the board, Minister, we're doing a huge amount of stuff. The Affordable Housing Project, Minister, how is that going to bring down the price of an Auckland house? I'm sorry, I was not able through the line to hear that question, Rachel. My apologies. The affordable housing project that you've announced, how is that going to bring down the price of an Auckland house? Well, what it does is that it brings the first 300 homes, roughly, of the housing accords 39,000 on stream. Those houses are in that price range of 325 to 475,000. It's an area of which we've got some of the highest demand and the worst problems with overcrowding. It's a really exciting project, but it's just a first step on those 39,000 homes. This week with Mayor of Auckland, I'll be announcing the opening up of thousands of new lots through the okay. accord and through the special housing areas that will help address these supply challenges that we have in our bigger city. Where will they be? Where are those new lots? Well, we'll be announcing that this week. Watch the space, Rachel. West Auckland, South Auckland? Watch the space. Are they going to be where people are going to want to live? Absolutely. No, look, we're very focused with the Auckland Council on a balanced plan that will see those 39,000 houses. What we're looking to announce this week uh, is the very first special housing area was announced last Thursday. We've got the legislation passed. We've got the accord in place. Okay. We are moving with pace and momentum to get the new houses that Auckland and New Zealand needs. Just very quickly, Minister, you've got rapidly rising house prices. You have this inevitability of a 2% interest rate rise. Do you, do you accept that in this environment there's very real political risk to the government here heading into the next election? Uh, I think the way in which the government has uh, managed this issue, this issue of housing affordability and ownership rates uh, goes back 25 years. Uh, people are mature. They aren't understand there is not instant solutions and I think they will see from the government with all of the work that we're doing across everything from KiwiSaver to those welcome home loans to the housing accord uh, to the building materials work that we're doing to get prices down there the reduction in the infrastructure costs okay. you could not have more work being done to address this important issue right. of housing. Housing Minister Dr Nick Smith appreciate your time thank you from Nelson this morning. Thanks Rachel. Uh,